So, verse 18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Why would Paul say, don't get drunk on wine, instead be filled with the Holy Spirit? I think he's definitely contrasting. And it goes back to what John was talking about. He's talking about influence. Okay? If you, if you watch a guy come out of a bar and he's weaving down the street, you know he's under the influence, right? Yeah. Okay? Because that's what alcohol, that's what wine will do to you. But that's also what the whole... Let me, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> but Paul is saying instead of that influence, we should be influenced by the Holy Spirit. And that's the, the whole idea that he's talking about here of making the most of every opportunity, living in the light, making our lives count for Jesus Christ. And then Paul lists here four evidences of being spirit-filled. Four evidences of being spirit-controlled or spirit-influenced. The first one he mentions is speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and, uh, and songs from the Spirit. Okay, so psalms, psalms were from the Old Testament book of Psalms. Hymns were songs written by the early church. So they would have been like the equivalent of contemporary Christian music today, because it would have been contemporary music then. Right? Uh, and songs from the Spirit could possibly have been spontaneous, Spirit-inspired songs. Okay, I don't... Um, how many of you sing when you're alone? Okay. How many of you just make up spiritual songs when you're by yourself? Anybody ever? Okay, that's the idea here. That's the idea. Yeah, I mean, if you don't write them down, right? Yeah, but you're just making it up as you go. But it's, it's a between you and the Lord kind of a thing. It's this kind of fellowship, uh, worship thing. Um, also, a Roman governor known as Pliny the Younger, he wrote a letter asking for advice on how to deal with the early Christians. And in that letter, he says that during the worship services of early Christians, he says they sing responsive songs, okay, which would be almost like an antiphonal thing. Okay? So uh, these people would sing something, and then those people on the other side would sing something in response. Right? Sometimes, every once in a while, we do a responsive reading here. Okay? That's kind of that idea. Okay? And uh, we, we do a responsive reading, and then people say, what, are we turning Lutheran? Yeah. No. We're just doing a responsive reading. It's okay. Hang in there. You're going to be all right. You know? So, uh, but yeah. So that's the idea here. Question. Did you know that when you sing in worship, that you are speaking to and ministering to one another? Tell me how that happens. When we, when we sing, we minister to one another in our attitude with our singing, right? In our body language. Have you, ever, have you ever been in the middle of worship and you look to somebody next to you and they're... What, what does that do to your worship? What does that do to your worship? <laughs> it kind of it kind of takes it out of you, doesn't it? Yeah. But if you see somebody who's into it and active and participating... That buoys your spirit. If you see somebody who's focused on, on the words, as Rusty was telling us, and they're engaged in worshiping, that ministers to you. That ministers to you. Okay, so one of the evidences of being influenced by the Holy Spirit is that we speak to one another, we minister to one another, okay, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Another thing is singing and, make music, uh, singing and making music from your heart to the Lord. And the word for making music there originally meant to strum the strings. So that might be concerning to our non-instrumental brothers and sisters, that that's in there. But over time, it came to mean using any instrument, and that was used interchangeably for the instrument of the human voice. But the key here is to the Lord. To the Lord, right? Paul is, uh, Paul is saying that part of being spirit-filled and spirit-influenced is worshiping and praising God musically. 
Okay, so there's an aspect in which we are aware that we are with each other and we influence each other. But there also has to be a part of it where our praise and our worship is God-focused. It is directed to Him. What kind of singing do you think pleases God? So it's it's enthusiastic singing. It's the attitude. Uh, Thinking about whether you like the song or focusing on the message of the song. Okay? It's not about whether or not you like the song. Right? It's, is this God-focused? Is this worshipful? Is this lifting my spirit to commune with His spirit? Another evidence of being spirit-filled is always celebrating the grace and generosity of God in everything here. He says, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Now, what do you think Paul means here when he says for everything? How can you, how can you give thanks for everything? What do, you, what do you remember? What do you key into? What, what is it that you focus on so that you are able to do that or you try to do that? I focus on Romans 8.28. How can I give thanks in everything? For we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So, Okay, another thing he says, an indication of a spirit-influenced, spirit-filled life. Verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submitting to one another is evidence of being spirit-filled, spirit-influenced, and spirit-controlled. And this is the idea of humbling yourself. The idea of submission is that you voluntarily yield to others in the congregation, because he's writing this to a church. You subject yourself to others in the congregation. You consider others and their wants and their needs as more important than you and yours. Okay? So, what do you usually hear or read as being the indicators of being spirit-filled? Tongues, showy spiritual gifts, right? Hyper-charisma. But what you don't hear that much is ministry. Heartfelt worship, giving thanks, and submission. That's what Paul says. It's not not that often that we see somebody who is very humble and submissive. And everybody says, wow, they really got the Holy Spirit going on. But that's what it is. 